So you saw Beautiful? Yeah, he's a great actor. And it's a beautiful picture. But it's, it starts very depressing. It gets even more depressing. Then it gets really depressing. Then it gets so sad with the little girl. The wonderful acting, wonderful scenes. And at the end, it's you're left with, you know, cancer and death and sadness and. I don't know. I don't know what else they could have done. See, I don't know whether they could have been in it, great moments of joy and something. To, it's 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 hard to sell. Inaritu is really interested in this kind of raw emotion that he gets out of his actors, and Javier Bardem just goes as far as you could imagine any actor going. Well, they were on. They were both on Charlie Rose the other night, and Charlie was trying to ask him, "How do you do this? How do you get into it?" Yeah, it's questions that are very difficult to answer. And Bardem is, is so wonderfully charming and honest. He said, well, you just, you just have to, you have to get into it. You get into it. You, you know, you get into it. I mean, they, what are they going to say? He's very good. He's very, the guy, the director is great. Yeah, but it, it, not to, not to seem too superficial, but, um, one of the ways that, that intense pain and emotion can be leavened is with humor. Well, and that was always something that I think you were able to, to bring I hope to so. the most difficult material that you ever tackled. Yeah. You know, painful stuff, like Unmarried Woman. I mean, you, you yeah. still made it funny. I did. Well, that's the way I see life. I mean, I'm, don't forget I'm not from uh, Mexico or those places. Although, those guys could see funny. I don't know, but what's his name, Inaratu? You no. Know. He is funny in real life. He's no, charming. I saw him, and in, in he was interviewed on yeah. Charlie Rose. Yeah. First of all, his hair is like that. It's funny <laughs> hair. And, you know, and, and Bardem looks like he needs a, a shave and a haircut. And Charlie is so slick and beautiful. Uh, my movies, look. I never really stopped and thought about, is this funny, is this sad, is this... I just wrote those scripts, alone or with somebody, which turned out to have mixtures of what life has. And as long as you're alive and I'm alive, we're probably going to have days, which even in one day, you're going to have some nice ups, and you're going to have some downs, you're going to have some in-betweens. And there might be a laugh here and there. It happens. So that's the way I see it. I don't. I don't fault the other. You know, uh, my the thing that inspired me to make movies was probably seeing Vitelloni in 1956 or seven. I don't know when, in New York, Fellini's movie, where these four. Uh, Vitelloni means the fatted calves. These four post-war Italians in the small town of Rimini who have nothing to do. They're all right after the war. They're in their early 20s. They don't know what to do with themselves. They walk around near the beach. They make jokes. They have fun. Suddenly there's terrible sadness. There's a tragedy with a sister. There's something bad here. There's this, there's that. There's all those mixtures. And I understood those guys as if I had grown up with him. And it was an Italian, I'd never been to Italy. And that's what inspired me to start to think about. And that's both funny and sad. But what strikes me about the films that you made, in, especially in the 70s, mm -hmm. is that they were what we would consider to be independent films today. Very naturalistic, very much based in real life. Um, not what we would call a studio film, Today. Yeah, but see, I made, they were all studio films. I know. And they, you were utterly supported by the studio system. They were, you were part of They it. left me alone. Yeah. Why? How did that happen? I'm not sure I understand. I don't know. I, I would say the, the men, they were men, so I'm going to say the men. I'm very careful about that. <laughs> the men running the studios, and I can name them. Mike Frankovich, running Columbia, he had a division for four movies. Alan Ladd Jr. 
who did four of my movies. So he said yes to Harry and Tonto. Next stop, Unmarried Woman, Willie and Phil, and Tempest. It takes a lot of guts. But, and he's not the kind of guy you'd think would be, you know, uh, a focus guy like Seamus. Laddie is more, you know, you know, the son of Alan Ladd. You'd think he's more like a big studio. He didn't think that way. He thought whatever, he, if he liked the script. But the stakes weren't as high back then. Well, you say they weren't, but those days the pictures were cheaper, but they wanted good movies. They weren't as worried about having a movie that opens big on Friday. Yeah. I'm telling you, right now, if you've got a studio, you've got to have a movie for summertime, a tentpole movie, whatever they call them, and Christmas. You must have two, hopefully three, big ones. They could be made about garbage as long as they make a lot of money. And so, you know, we're having sequel after sequel after sequel, and somehow they're still going to see some of them. Six Harry Potters. That's a franchise that's based on literary material. I know, but... Or like Lord of the Rings. Four Transformers or something. Three Fockers <laughs> Studios. I don't know the names of all of them. Well, the par what you did with your various writing partners was you created original films. I mean, the, 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 you, you, you created something where there was nothing. And I, for the most part, you're right, yeah. And that's the thing that seems to, you know, I mean, people well, that, want originality. But your, your question was, how was I able to get them made? I'm saying the only reason I could think of... Is because they wanted good movies. They wanted good movies, but they were less... They were more inclined to be one-on-one -on -one with you. It's, 